Welcome back to Podcast of the Damned. This is episode three. I want to start off by apologizing for being away for so long. I got my wisdom teeth out, finally, and I've just been having a really shitty two months. And it's just been really, really rough. And I do apologize for keeping you guys waiting so long, especially that we're only on the third episode. But with that out of the way, um, let's get right into the story. Today we're going to be talking about the Slenderman stabbing. I'm sure you all have heard about this, either from hearing it on the news. It was kind of recent. I mean, it happened in 2014. Uh, If you haven't heard of it, well, you're in luck because I'm about to inform you. It all starts in... Waukesha, Wisconsin. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I am terrible at pronunciations. And it happened on May 31st of 2014. Two 12 year old girls, Anissa Wire and Morgan Geyser, Lord Peyton. Hold on. I think it's Lautner. But they lured her into the woods and stabbed her 19 times. Because they thought if they did that, they would become proxies of the Slender Man. Uh, we'll go into who Slender Man is in a bit. First, I want to give you a background on their friendship. Peyton became friends with Morgan in fourth grade because she was at lunch and she saw her sitting alone and felt bad for her. And pretty soon, they started hanging out after school and having sleepovers. And Morgan even gave Peyton a nickname, Bella. Morgan said that she was her only friend for a long time, which is kind of sad. But things started to turn for the worse when Morgan became friends with a girl named Anissa about two years later. And soon they became obsessed with the fictional character Slenderman. And that really scared Peyton, but she went along with it because, and I quote, Morgan liked it and thought it was real, but I went along with it. I was supportive because I thought that's what she liked. You know, I really feel for Peyton there because I think we all tend to do that, like go along with what other kids are doing because you want to feel accepted. But as I was saying, uh, they were into Slenderman. So, a little backstory on him, and I went in depth with this because I personally used to be a massive creepypasta fan. I remember when this happened, my dad coming down to my room and telling me that I wasn't allowed to read anything about Slenderman anymore, and I wasn't allowed to draw pictures of Slenderman anymore. Nothing, nothing Slenderman related was to be in the house because he thought I was going to kill somebody and it was going to make me evil. I uh, didn't listen, (laughs) but I used to be like balls deep into this shit. (laughs) And I mean, I still enjoy it to an extent, but not as heavily as I was. And I think after this occurred, a lot of parents, I know with a lot of Like, me and a lot of my friends that really enjoyed Creepypasta, like, our parents were all on guard about it because they thought that it would, you know, turn us evil and, like, fuck us up. (laughs) And, like, that kind of sparks the argument, like, we should be monitoring what our kids are viewing. And I do agree with that to an extent. I mean, in my personal opinion, it all depends on the kid. And yes, age is a factor too. Like, I would not be letting my, you know, six year old or eight year old read this shit. But I think as long as the kid has, is like, you know, old enough, like for creepypasta, depending, you know, uh, I, I'd say like, you know, 13, 14, it just as long as they have like a good head on their shoulders and like they have a sense of what is real and what is not, like, just my parents are trying to do with my little brother because he's, you know, getting into video games and he likes superhero movies, whatever, like action movies. And 
I remember my stepmom sitting down with them and we all had to have the talk with them. You know, buddy, this is all fake. You know, it's not real. And I mean, in my own personal experience with being that age and, you know, discerning what is real and what isn't, I just kind of viewed it as like an urban legend. Like, I knew it wasn't real. I knew better than the like actually kill people of course but I just looked at it as like an urban legend you know nothing more than that I did know people who didn't have a sense of that like they thought he was 100% real and they were his proxies and honestly I did worry about them sometimes like when they'd be talking about it it's like okay dude you're going a little too far with this like Carving the proxy symbol into your arm uh, is not the right way to go. Which I'm kind of calling myself out here because I did get a uh, proxy tattoo on my hand when I was a grown adult. Um, but I've, I've wanted that tattoo since 8th grade. Just like, I don't know, I just wanted it to remind me of that time in my life because Honestly, it was a fun time. Like, I had so much fun, like, reading these stories, and it was, like, the best memories from when I was, like, a teenager. It's just sitting down and reading all these stories and, you know, making fan art and whatnot. It was a really happy time for me, and I just wanted something to memorialize that time. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> Who is Slenderman? He's a supernatural creature between 6 to 15 feet tall. It all depends. He can, like, shapeshift. He can become taller. <laughs> Which, I wish I could do that. That'd be so fucking cool. Like, if I just needed something from the top shelf, I could just, oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, he wears a black suit with a red or black tie and a white shirt. It all depends on, you know, who's drawing him, you know, what story it is. Uh, he has no hair facial features. In other stories, he is a tall, disfigured man with white spheres where his eyes should have been. Um, I'll go into that uh, version in a bit. Uh, he has long, bony fingers, and he has tentacles. Kinky, right? <laughs> he behaves in kind of a passive-aggressive manner. Uh, he stalks his targets for years before ever, like, attacking or anything. Um, he also tortures them mentally over very lo long periods of time, and he feeds on their fear and paranoia to drive them to insanity. It sounds fun, I mean, sign me right up. Uh, he doesn't really have a rhyme or reason to, like, who he picks. It's just like, oh, here's a person. I'm gonna fuck him up for life. <laughs> and then when he does make them his proxies, he takes them to a place called Slender Mansion. Sounds cozy. <laughs> but his proxies, uh, they pretty much serve him, and they're under his control, like, 24-7. I mentioned it before, he has a symbol, uh, which... I said I have tattooed on me. Uh, it's a circle with an X through it. I know, creative. <laughs> I think like the simpler, the scarier, honestly. Slenderman originated as a meme um, in the Something Awful forum by Eric Knudsen, uh, also known as Victor Surge. This was in 2009. He was made for a Photoshop contest. And then from 2009 to 2014, uh, there was a YouTube series called Marble Hornets, which if you haven't seen it, watch it. I really, really like it. Um, but in that, Slenderman's known as the Operator. And in 2015, uh, a movie was made of Marble Hornets where Doug Jones played the Operator. There is also uh, Slender the Eight Pages, which is a video game, and the sequel to that, Slender the Arrival, 
believe it or not, Slenderman actually inspired the Enderman in Minecraft. And then there was a 28 film, 2018 film uh, where he is played by Javier Bote. I couldn't find the name of that film because I probably didn't look deep enough. But anyway, there was a character created to connect Slenderman to actual folklore. I'm not going to bother saying it in German because I know I'm not going to and I'm just going to butcher it. Uh, but basically, he was called the Tall Man. Uh, he was associated with woodcuts carved by an unknown artist in 16th century Germany. Described, you know, as the fairy of the Black Forest that abducted bad children uh, that went into the forest. And he would stalk them uh, until they admitted what they did wrong to their parents. Which is fucking terrifying, and if I heard that story as a child, I would behave myself. I would be sitting in my room 24-7 not doing anything, because I would be too fucking scared. <laughs> there is like a supposed translated account from 1702 uh, that describes an incident uh, involving the tall man. This is, this is all fake, by the way, you know. But the journal entry goes like this. My child, my Lars, he is gone. Taken from his bed. The only thing that we found was a scrap of black clothing. It feels like cotton, but it is softer, thicker. Lars came into my bedroom yesterday, screaming at the top of his lungs that the angel's outside. I asked him what he was talking about, and he told me some nonsense fairy story about the tall man. He said he went into the groves by our village and found one of my cows dead hanging from a tree. I thought nothing of it at first, but now he is gone. We must find Lars, and my family must leave before we are killed. I am so sorry, my son. I should have listened. May God forgive me. That's really sad. <laughs> um, anyway, the tall man uh, was written by a another something awful user. Name, <laughs> name, throw up. I'm sorry, I'm very immature. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, he was basically created to uh, imply that he was Slender Man. Surprisingly, a lot of people think this is a genuine myth. I did for so long until actually this, until I was researching this, I thought it was. It was real because I never, like, looked into that further. I was just all about Slenderman and then I heard, oh, Slenderman was based off of this and I didn't bother to fucking look it up. <laughs> Even though I have done mounds of research on Slenderman when I was, like, a teen. <laughs> this just never crossed my mind to, like, actually dig further into. Oops. Anyway, <laughs> back to the regularly scheduled program. Uh, the night before the stabbing, the three girls, Anise, Morgan, and Peyton, were having a sleepover uh, because they were celebrating Morgan's birthday. Peyton said, looking back, the sleepover was a little bit different because Morgan didn't want to stay up all night. And then the next day, they went to David's Park because the girls told Peyton that they were going to play hide-and-seek. And I guess when they were playing, Peyton went into the bathroom or something, into like a park bathroom, and Anissa and Morgan came in and tried to knock her out. And Peyton still stayed with the two. She still decided, hey, let's, you know, let's continue playing. They lured her to the woods, and then they pinned her down and stabbed her 19 times with a 5 inch long knife. They stabbed her in the arm, torso, and the legs. The knife hit her stomach and liver, and, but it missed a major artery by like a millimeter. She is very lucky to be alive, let me tell you. Like, props to her. Like, I feel so bad for this girl. Like, she was with people she trusted and was like real good friends with and they betrayed her she ended up crawling herself out of the woods and 
laid in the grass and a cyclist named Greg Steinberg found her and called the ambulance. Uh, she spent weeks in the ICU and she lived, but she's left with 25 scars. This, this poor girl, dude, I, I feel so bad for her. I hope she's doing, I hope she's doing okay today. Uh, I know they did an update about her, and I'll get to that in a bit, but I really hope she's doing good. Like, she deserves, you know, the happiest life. Um, after Morgan and Anissa stabbed her, they ran through the woods to find the Slender Mansion, um, which is said to be in the forest that they were in. They were both then later found by police, and, and when Anissa was interrogated, she told them, I was told if I didn't do something, my family would be in danger. Uh, she genuinely believed Slenderman would kill her family if she didn't kill Peyton. But also in the interrogation, they pointed fingers at each other when they were asked whose idea was it to attack Peyton. It was later found out that Morgan was the one who stabbed Peyton, and Anissa just stood on the sidelines. This part's really concerning. This is a quote from the interrogation. You can find it online. She, Morgan told the detective, I've wanted to hurt people before, but they were not nice to me, so they deserve it. That's, that's fucked up. That's creepy. They did a lot of planning for this. They planned this six months in advance, like... Six months, dude. Like, I couldn't imagine, like, planning to kill someone for six months. Like, I couldn't imagine planning to kill my friend for six months and just casually, like, you know, casually just hanging out with them every day. Like, nothing's wrong. Meanwhile, you know you're gonna kill them. Like, I couldn't... Oh, what the fuck is wrong with people, dude? What the fuck? <sighs> And you can't even be like, oh, well, they were just kids. They didn't know any better. Like, dude, what the fuck? Oh, this is, this is just pissing me off for some reason. Like, not for some reason. Like, I'm just, they, she trusted them. Like, I don't, it shouldn't be get, getting me this upset. It shouldn't. Look, I don't know. Anyway. Uh... They were waived out of juvenile court and tried as adults because of how horrifying the scene was. In December of 2017, Anissa pled guilty for attempted second degree homicide and the jury found her not guilty by mental disease or defect. Uh, she received 25 years in a mental health facility. Morgan ended up getting way more time than Anissa. Uh, in 2018, she accepted a plea offer where she wouldn't go to trial, uh, but she would be evaluated by psychiatrists to see how long she would be put into a mental hospital. And she pleaded guilty, but she was also found not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. And she was also diagnosed with schizophrenia. She was given 40 years in a mental hospital for attempted first-degree intentional homicide. Anissa recently actually had a hearing um, so she could be let out from the mental health facility and the judge granted her request because the evaluation that she had, uh, three doctors assessed her and they said she doesn't pose a threat to herself or any other people. What they do now is they're going to create a release plan. Uh, there are going to be conditions. She has to be supervised by both the corrections department and mental health officials so they could track her progress until she's 37 years old. Basically the age she would have been if she would have stayed in the facility and got out. They said she plans to live with her father and go receive higher education. But the more important question about this is, how's Peyton doing? Like, what is she doing now? She's tried to regain mu as much of a normal life as she can. 
She actually did have something to say about Morgan's mom. She said she feels bad for her, and this is the quote she gave. I thought about what she's doing and how hard it must be for her, because I'm sure a lot of people are trashing her and hating her, and saying that it's her fault she raised Morgan wrong. It wasn't her fault. Morgan's schizophrenic. There's nothing that she could have done to stop that or control that. It wasn't her fault. Uh, but she also said she doesn't want to ever see or talk to the two girls ever again. And she said what they did was unforgivable. And she's aware that Morgan's eligible to petition for release, but she doesn't fear her getting released. She also said in that interview uh, that in 2019 that she has plans to attend college to get a career in the medical field. Which I'm glad she's, you know, moving on from that and, like, you know, working on having a better life. Because after all she's been through, she deserves it. Like, I hope, you know, nowadays she's in college and living her dreams. Anyway, that is the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry if this sounds a bit rough. It's, uh, I'm just trying to get back in the saddle here. I'm not a very good speaker, as we can all see. Uh, <laughs> it's just like I'm trying to read and, you know, my mouth goes faster than my brain likes to take in information. <laughs> so I apologize for that. But I hope to see you guys in the next episode. And as always, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.